Hi, this is a continuation of my previous video whereby we were modeling a mechanical system that is composed of a variable ideal torque source and a gearbox with the sensors to measure the speed input and the speed outputs. Therefore, this is the mechanical system we modeled in a previous video. This electrical system that has a battery pack. Therefore, we are today we are going to integrate these two using a DC motor. In the process, it becomes electromechanical system. I have already opened my 100 voltage battery pack we modeled. Therefore, you, I'm going to copy this, control copy, and paste it in mechanical system. Control paste. Therefore, then we need a DC. We are using a, for now, we are going to use a DC motor for illustration. Therefore, you go to library, add a ele simscape, electrical, ele electromechanical, electromechanical, brushed motors. You select the DC motor. Okay. Then, as you can see, we have very many blocks. We have, it is a good idea or uh, to simplify your blocks. Therefore, you can combine similar blocks that has same functionality in one block. That is, you can create a subsystem. There are three ways of creating a subsystem. The first way is highlight what you need to create and press Ctrl G. It combines those three systems forming a subsystem. Control Z. Also, highlight what you need. Then these three dots they pop. Use the first one. Create subsystem. Control Z. Last method, highlight everything. Right click, create subsystem. Okay. Rename this subsystem as a gear sub system. Gear subsystem like that double click on the subsystem as you can see now it has formed connection ports these are called connection ports this one is the input to the s this is the output in input shaft output shaft this one is the reference okay then if you go back, you can see now we have in, ref, and out. Same case applies to all of these. You can delete these. You can combine all of these forming as one subsystem. Call it sensor subsystem. Having subsystem is usually very easy for you to, for you to troubleshoot. If you double click the sensor subsystem, we have, uh, you can see, we have uh, two connection ports and two simulink ports. These are called simulink ports because they read the simulink signal. Okay. Therefore, let me arrange a little bit. This is the input, this is the output. Therefore, this is I for input. I call this a no for output. Okay. Again here, in this one is measuring the input speed. This one is measuring the output speed. Okay. And we have our our references here. Let me make it a little bit neat. Make a, it is make a, make it a good habit of making your your models become a little bit. It helps you to troubleshoot. As you're going to see, this model will become more complex as you progress. Okay, I can delete this over. I don't need this over there. You can see now it is becoming more neat. Okay. Then I can still. Arrange a little bit like that. That's better. Then 
remember we used a variable ideal torque source because we didn't have a DC motor. Therefore, I can replace this system, delete it using my DC motor. Always connect R to the system like that. And always connect C to the reference. Okay, then our battery pack is here. Connect positive to positive, negative to negative. Remember, you don't have a solver. Delete it like that. Uh, oops, let me delete this and make it more neat. I want it to be. Let me put my over here. Yeah, then I need electrical. Electrical reference. Remember this one is electrical domain. We need electrical reference this side. You can rotate if you if you want to rotate. Control R. Then we need a uh, mechanical rotational. Reference that is in foundation mechanical rotational mechanical reference here, and you can connect it here, yeah, like that. Okay, yeah, I think our system is done. What else we need? We can make can now maybe move them close a little bit still I can make this one as one subsystem if I want to make it more simplified but now not necessarily let's see let's use 10 seconds simulation OD to DT run uh, East 100 supposed to be 10 but it's okay if you check your scope as you can see from the scope, we are getting 4 and 8. This is about 4. We forgot to, we didn't, we have to, the parameters for the DC motor, we have to put the parameters for the DC motor. Yeah, therefore, let me use, uh, I'm going to use a permanent magnet for the field type. For the model parameterization, we have three ways. I'm going to use equivalent circuit parameters whereby you provide armature resistance. Let's use 0.0093. This data you can get from your DC motor specs. Ohms. Armature inductance, let me use 172. Micro Henley, I'm using our data. For the back EMF, let me use 0 0.19. For the mechanical, leave them as default for now. I'll come back later here. Those are three. Then you can say apply. Okay. Remember, let me use 10 seconds. Run again. Compiling has already solved. Double click on the scope. As you can see, the value is about 55 for the input. This one is about 110. It is about 110. Let me put about 110. It's about 55. As you can see, the speed is double, double the input speed. Output speed is double the input. Therefore, it means our gear ratio is 0 0.5 we need to so that the the speed can can reduce the, then we have it is a good idea good be, to to rename the signals so that this is a input this is the output okay 
we are using the motor to rotate the input shaft of our gearbox and we have said the ratio is 2 meaning the speed of the, the, the torque at output has to be has to be twice the torque at input okay then the speed here is twice the speed here let's see whether that is whether our system is functioning yeah you can see this one is almost this one is uh yeah you can see the output speed is half the input okay that's how you model that's how you model the electromechanical system in my next video i'm going now to illustrate how you can initialize your system because every system needs initial conditions and then we are going to make sure that these initial conditions they don't contradict for you to get some idea of the initial conditions just go back to the video there's a video i created about the turbine whereby i was using i was using a simulink to model a turbine that had initial conditions and some were contradicting therefore in my next video we are going to focus how can you initialize our system so that we get accurate results thank you share my video comment like it and thanks so much